Coming from Fuerteventura, you can see that the waves are definitely giving the surfers a lot of action this morning. My goal today is to head right there to the island of Lanzarote. I am kind of relieved to be getting out of this resort. It's not that good, so be warned. I mean, Ryu, I don't know what to say. Like I said, I feel like I'm living in the 60s, but find yourself a modern resort if they exist. I think they're mostly on the south coast of Fuerteventura, but it is convenient to the dunes and everything else. But I am gonna be heading out to Lanzarote, two days there, and then back to Gran Canaria, and then exiting the Canary Islands. We're at a pretty good breakfast here at the Rio Resort. Just waiting on the bus here. It's taking forever, so I think I just missed it. I shouldn't be waiting too much longer, thankfully. One last look at the beautiful sand dunes of Fuerteventura, and I am off to Lanzarote, my final island in the Canaries. Again, I do not recommend this property whatsoever. It is cheap compared to what it usually is. I only paid 100 US, it's regular 200 US. But even so, I didn't enjoy my stay, apart from the dinner and the breakfast. It was a nice touch that they gave caviar for dinner. There was some high-end dishes for sure, muzzles. Um, but, you know, all in all, probably still not worth it for the quality of the room I got. So if you do come to Fuerteventura, just keep that in mind. So the journey to Lanzarote should take just about 30 minutes and it leaves in 45 minutes, so I better get this bus soon or I might miss it. The next ferry after that is not till 5.30. I'm gonna go with the cheaper option. There's a company called Linies Romero, which is literally half the price of the big names like the Fred Olsen. So keep that in mind if you come here. It's one of the only islands where you're not gonna be paying excessive prices. If I took the Fred Olsen, I would be paying upwards of 33 euros to get across. It's like 40 bucks US, so really expensive. This is more like $20 US. I'm only paying 14 euros to cross. Once I get into Lanzarote, it's about a 30 minute bus ride to Arrecife, where I'm going to be spending the night, at least in the area there. I'm not too sure yet what I'm gonna do, but final island is on the horizon, and then I leave the Canaries and head elsewhere in Europe. So one of the cool things about Coralejo are these windmills that are pretty much everywhere around town. Every plaza here has one of these windmills. This is another reason why it reminds me so much of the Greek Isles here. So I'm just arriving here at the Coralejo port to catch the ferry over to Lanzarote. One last look around here at Coralejo village. Looks like the water is definitely more turquoise than the overcast dreary gray that I encountered yesterday. This is Coralejo Harbor. You can see just how bustling it is. And I'm almost here at the ferry terminal. I got about 10 minutes before it leaves, so I hope I don't miss it. After literally running to the port because of a slow line, I finally made it on the boat here. They actually had to load the walkway back on to get me on, so kind of embarrassing, but I'm glad I got on this one or else it would have been another four hour wait for the next ferry. The lineup was ridiculously long when I got there, so I didn't expect that many people to get uh, last minute tickets, but evidently this route's pretty popular, so I had to wait with five people ahead of me. You can see it's definitely a rocky ride. see just how wavy it is. Really strong swells right now. Crazy. All right, I've just arrived on the island of Lanzarote. This is the Linias Romero Ferry, which is my recommendation if you are in the area. So I'm gonna head out now to the bus station. I'm gonna catch a bus to the center of the island, towards the airport actually, and find a place to stay for the night. The 
boss just dropped me off pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Ironically enough, I got off at a random stop and the apartment that I was going to book is actually just 100 meters down the road. So must have been intuition or something. Anyway, I'm off to the apartment. I booked a one bedroom apartment for the night with pool and everything else. It was pretty cheap. It was only 30 euros plus tax. I think it came to 35 euros or something really inexpensive in this area. But I can't wait to explore Lanzarote. I'm going to head down to Playa Blanca, which is the main beach here in Lanzarote, and see if I can get a tour for tomorrow to the Timanfaya National Park, which is all of the actually active volcanoes. So it was literally a two minute walk from the bus stop. So, so a very convenient location, but this is the Arpartimentos Tisalaya. Again, 35 euros a night. Pretty inexpensive place. I'm gonna go check in. Well, this is pretty bizarre. The gate's locked. I rang the bell and there is no answer whatsoever. So I tried to call them and they look like they're completely closed. I don't even see any guests in there. So hotels.com allowed me to book it but nobody's home. All right, I've checked into my apartment here in Lanzarote. The guy eventually showed up after about 15 minutes. What you see here is 35 euros per night. The bedroom is pretty basic. And the one thing I'm kicking myself for is I did not check if this has AC and it does not. So if you want any cooling, you have to purchase a fan, which is pathetic because the fan costs 15 euros. So definitely going to be a bit hot evening. So I'm just heading down the hill here towards Playa Blanca. So this is in the community of Puerto del Carmen, which is the major resort town here in Lanzarote. So the goal here is to find a tour company that can sell me a tour for tomorrow of the Timanfaya Volcanoes National Park. I've noticed that prices on the internet for tours are a lot higher than actually paying somebody locally in a local tour outfit because there's more competition, I guess. It is dead here. I actually thought it would be way more bustling with activity, but you can see that most of the businesses are actually closed down. So definitely hard hit here due to c that's for sure. There's a few restaurants open, but by and large, I would say 60 to 70% of all these businesses are shut down. Pretty crazy. Looks like a beautiful beach though, coming up. It's a nice little seafront boulevard here running through Playa Blanca. Cannot seem to find a tour outfit though, so I'm not too sure. Oh, Tickets Direct, that could be one. We'll see. Definitely some beautiful landscape trees here you can see. Not much going on though, it's pretty dead. Lanzarote is definitely the most chill of the islands that I visited so far. There's almost nobody here and everything is shut down. But beautiful day on the beach in Lanzarote. There's a few people out there trying to surf and braving the waves. They're not quite as powerful as they were in Fuerteventura, but definitely a scenic beach. So the sun is pretty much gone at this point, as you can see. Clouds are rolling in and the winds are picking up. So right across, that is the south coast of Lanzarote and you can barely see it. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in, but you can barely see it, but there's Fuerteventura on the horizon. So that's where I was earlier today. And there's the channel between the two islands, so. Pretty close, they're only 11 kilometers apart. Few brave souls braving the clouds and the wind down there at the beach. So you can see there is a wonderful malecon or boardwalk next to the sea here in Puerto del Carmen. All right, so I was able to get a tour for tomorrow, so that's excellent news. The tour is going to leave tomorrow at 9.40 a.m., which is a bit late, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I guess it's an eight-hour tour of the island, so hey, at least I get to see the volcanoes. Hopefully the weather actually cooperates for tomorrow and it doesn't rain. So yeah, pretty much gonna head back to the hotel and enjoy the pool for a while because the weather's pretty foul out right now. So a quick tour of the apartment. You can see a living room here, the smallish TV, but a TV. Bar area for seating for dinner, full kitchen with all the equipment needed to cook meals. The bathroom is full on 1970 but it's okay. And the beds, these are very cheap quality. So they're more like hostel beds in my opinion. And you know, decent set of armoires. And that horrible art, I don't know what's going on in Spain, but they need to invest in better pictures. Oh my goodness. All right, I won't be mean. 